Welcome back, everybody, to the Heroes Hype Amateur Series Week 13, and we have finally made it to the finals, Anna. Hooray! Who do we have, Gilly? Who are we casting? We are casting The Plays versus Pool Plato Some Tango. So two new teams in terms of team names. We've seen uh, players on both sides before here in on different teams, though, in the tournament. We've seen, I think Pool Plato was the second game that we casted of the evening and the plays of course were in the last round in that epic series versus the goon squad yeah absolutely i i was just distracted for a minute trying to interpret pool plato some tangos is it a philosopher in a pool with dancing is it uh billiards being played by an ancient person i don't know I but know. They were blue but, team in the first or in the game that we cast with them, and so I thought that that was appropriate as they are blue. I guess you could have like a red lighted pool that would work, but blue seemed more apt. And we are ready for the draft, so we can head into that. I mean, even their acronym is PPST, which is like P PTSD. I don't know. I'm I'm overwhelmed. I'm really <laughs> excited for the finals, though. We already have a ban coming out from Pool Play-Doh, which is Uther. They have banned Uther, and I'm pretty surprised, but uh, I believe Plays was using Uther quite a bit in... No, I guess it was Goon Squad who used them in the last game, but we've seen Plays use them before. Regardless, something... I would say PPST has up their sleeve in that they do not want to be playing against Uther and don't necessarily want to pick him up either. Yeah, that's interesting. Uther is a hot commodity these days, but usually not someone we see banned because he's he's a great healer, he's got a stun, but he's not um, someone that can really break your meta a lot of times. So interesting that they chose to pick him. I think you're right. We've got something going on that he would be a really good counter for. So who do you, what do you think they might be looking to do that he could counter really easily? What? <laughs> well, yeah. they at least, I think, wanted to maybe get rid of a Divine Shield, the option for Divine Shield. And plays have chosen to ban Asmodan. I honestly don't know what that's about. I'm, I, I would almost say that's kind of like a you can have whomever. We don't care because... Do we have an invite to a game? I'm all kinds of... Okay, all right. We're remaking <laughs> that. Yeah, I was wondering if that might be the case. <laughs> because that's weird. All right, we've got the new one. I was like, Uther, okay. Asmodan, no. <laughs> all right. So we're back. We've got a new one. We are on... Is it Dragonshire that we're on? Here is an invite. So we can see what map we're going to be on. It is going to be Dragonshire. So I'm going to go ahead and send you an invite into this game. Gotcha, gotcha. And then very soon we'll be starting out. There we go. I think you're in. Yes. Sure am. Well, good. So, okay, the Asmodan, the Asthma ban, if, it, if you will, was a mistake. Would have been a, a really interesting psychological analysis, but mm -hmm. not so. So uh, we'll see what plays will ban, assuming that Pool, Pool Plato did mean to ban Uther, after we spent all that time talking about that. Yeah. So we're on Dragonshire once again. We saw a great Kerrigan combo, although it was stopped, too. But we saw the Kerrigan with the ETC and the Uther and the Chironda. So very strong composition in the early game. So I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe they were wanting to ban an Uther so they didn't have to deal with that again. We're not using that one. Okay. <laughs> Sorry guys, we're on a bit of a delay so I think the guys were confused. Um, we are... So, yes, we're on Dragonshire. I would love to see some more Illidan play. We got to see the awesomeness of Illidan, especially plays playing Illidan. <laughs> and uh, I, I do know that Taronda wasn't picked to ban, whether or not that was real, the Uther one, versus plays. It would be cool to see Evan back on 
his love that is Taronda. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because against Goon Squad, at least, we saw plays being a little more of a brute force team. They were more interested in having compositions that have a lot of damage, that have a lot of synergy that way in terms of team fight, where we saw Goon Squad looking for kind of the uh, the finesse wombos, if you will. So it'll be interesting to see if Pool Plato is uh, that type of team or not. Looks like Uther was the band they were looking for, so we're going to see Pool Plato ban Uther right away. Now we'll get to see what plays will ban. I don't think it'll be an asthma ban, as you <laughs> so so smartly coined the term for. But an Uther ban is pretty cool. I'm wondering if it's more for a Divine Shield, if they're knowing that Plays likes to play that Illidan, and they're saying, okay, well, you can pick an Illidan, but you aren't going to be able to combo it with an Uther. And Plays have chosen once again to ban out Lost Vikings, and for like the 19th time tonight, probably an exaggeration, we will not have Eric, Olaf, and Balog gracing us with their presence. Certainly a more standard and predictable thing to do, so Plays, that's fine if you never want to let me have an Asmo ban again. I think I'm really sad that this is a really great term we've coined and it's probably never going to be used for <laughs> quite some time. But yeah, Vikings, we've gone over it over and over. But in case you're just joining us and you have no idea who the Lost Vikings are, they're a hero that are three different heroes in one. So they can be in three places at once, which means you can soak up a lot of experience and level your team up very fast with those guys. Now, Pool Plato is going for Jaina as the first pick. They are looking to deal some damage. So that's what Plays wanted to do last game that we watched. So we'll see if they try to pick up the rest of the damage dealers of their own. Yeah, didn't Plays have Vala, Jaina, and Illidan? That yes. is such a scary combination. So I think Jaina's a great pickup here. She's always a great pickup right at the beginning. But Plays does have their Illidan. They love Illidan, and they're going to go ahead and pick up Vala on top of that. So it will not be a Jaina Vala. But what will they use to to sustain them? They made the Malfurion work last game. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, when you have Jaina, Vala, and Illidan standing all around um, Malfurion underneath the Tranquility, it's just a damage ball. It's just impossible to pick apart uh, without perfect synergy. And even when you do, if you, say, pick out Illidan, you've still got Vala and Jaina standing underneath a healing blanket being able to shoot you. So that was that was really, really scary. So Pool Plato not wanting to deal with that, taking Jaina away... I think they're probably going to be looking for more damage. I get this feeling that these two teams are both really looking to pad their damage stats first. Although I don't know, and I did call for a Zagara earlier. I don't think I'm going to get it. I'm not feeling it this time, but I would like to see it. Yeah, I feel like we've moved away quite a bit from those straight push compositions, but Pool Plato doing the exact opposite of what uh, <laughs> what you wanted them to do. Oh, darn. <laughs> who, who knows why they do the things they do, but they did go ahead and pick up Murden and Brightwing. So we're going to have some polymorphs. Of course, Brightwing being known for uh, being a great support to deal with Illidan. She's got the polymorphs. And she can blink heal away as well if she's being chased. But Polymorph is a really big deal. They can just devastate a team with Metamorphosis because mm -hmm. you wait until the mor Metamorphosis drops and then instantly Polymorph with a Critterize even at level 16. You can take it down very quickly, especially with Jaina right on the ball there. And then Muradin's there to offer stuns as, a, as an addition to that. Looks like Plays will grab ETC, not a surprising tank to pick up, but someone that's going to synergize well with these guys. If we see a mosh pit, that's going to do a lot toward holding people in place while Vala and Illidan take them down. If we see a stage dive, there's going to be a lot of mobility on this map, being able to go from uh, shrine to shrine looking for the Dragon Knight. So a really smart pick, and that's going to be complemented by Tassadar, who we know as a half support, somebody who's going to be giving a lot of vision as well as escape ability here. So a great pick. Yeah, and he's got so much vision with Oracle and his shields as well. Not a divine shield by any sense, but at least he can throw a shield on which will help keep Illidan in the fight just a little bit longer too. And ETC, a very strong tanky tank that we've got out there. And that's going to just be super nice when it comes to, like you said, stage dive. If you do, he, he picks that up, I don't know that we'll see another another mosh but there especially when you're picking an etc into the bright wing knowing that that polymorph is there 
Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense, and especially on this map where you're going to want to send somebody on a mission to go grab a uh, shrine, for example, and then maybe need to be back into a team fight really quickly, as well as using that for engagement. We saw that in the last game as well, so I think you're probably right there. So we may be looking to see if plays can do something with a little more crowd control soon. I don't know, but right now it's Pool Plato's turn to pick. They have a tank, a damage, and a support, so they're sitting kind of pretty in terms of what kind of team they want to fill out. They are going to grab Sylvanas, which I'm not surprised to see at all, because we see a lot of Illidan, Vala, Jaina, Sylvanas being the first few picks in terms of the people who are going to be in the, the midst of the action doing damage. Sylvanas, though, a little bit more catered toward uh, the map in terms of damage sometimes, though she can be very valuable in a team fight as well, especially that wailing arrow with the silence. Now they've got the choice of who to pick up next. Do you think they're going to want some more damage? Do you think they're going to want another uh, half assassin? We do have Tyrande still on the board. We do have Tyrande on the board. I'm wondering if that's what they're wanting, if that's their play here, but they still have a lot of stuns off of Muradin. And I'm thinking that maybe they're going to want to go damage here, but I've definitely been wrong. What would you pick here? <laughs> would you pick your Kerrigan friend? I would look for more damage here. Although, there's a part of me, I just tend toward damage. I really like playing with lots of action and lots of damage. I like to go really ham. But, having a second support could be really helpful. No, they're going to go for damage. So thank you. I'm glad you agree with me, <laughs> Plato. Lots yeah. of damage is fun. And that adds to the mobility of this team because Falstad does have that global map presence, the ability to jump all over the map just like Brightwing. So, Pool Plato is not going to get caught out in bad situations as often. Plays is going to round out their pick with a Rhaegar, who is going to be the healer for their team. What do you think of that composition altogether, Gilly? Well, we often see Rhaegar with Illidan, although less as much before it used to be a requirement, right? It was like, oh, we're taking Illidan, we gotta have Rhaegar. So mm. it's gonna be less, but Rhaegar has a ton of healing potential, and they've also got Tassadar for the shields, so they're going to have great sustain, even though they do have the squishies in Vala and Illidan, whereas PPST, <sighs> Pool, <laughs> Pool Play-Doh, does have only that bright wing to provide healing, but it is a lot of healing that she can put out, especially if she grabs the blink heal. We'll have to see what Brightwing chooses to do there, whether they're going to be going for a lot of damage and then a quick disengage from the Emerald Wind, or if they want a little bit more sustain with the blink heal. But yeah, Pull play -Doh, listening to you saying, hold on, we're going to grab Murden and Brightwing, but then we're going to grab our damage Anna, and you're right. They did want to go for more damage there, and I love the Falstad. I think it's a good play against plays as well, because like I said, plays has shown very aggressive behavior. They really like to team fight. They like to have uh, compositions that can do lots of damage. So it looks like Pull Plato would like to beat them at their own game, which I think is going to make for a really entertaining match for us to watch. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm a little sad we don't get another Kerrigan on Dragonshire. It was so entertaining <sighs> before. Yeah, I mean Kerrigan is always entertaining. She is the queen of the swarm and I would always love to have her in a game, but you can't always get you what you want. And this is a pretty good this is a pretty good matchup as well. I'm really into some of these players. But you know who I've been missing, Gilly, just to put it out there? Who have you been missing? Anna? I've been missing my Diablo. Yeah, I think people are taking some time to figure him out. Uh, I I've asked Messiah this before and it was who over like out of ETC and Diablo, who was changed? the most and he was like ah it's still hard to tell yet but it seems like both were changed quite a bit but i feel like in this case we've seen etc a bit more i think the tank players are feeling a little bit more comfortable with the etc changes and being able to adapt to them a little bit more at least in this tournament than the the diablo changes that came out with the patch he did get it was pretty significant he went from a hero where you had basically one build with some chain like some very little variations on certain talent tiers to like being much more open in terms of builds that you can go which is something that blizzard really likes and i think in the long term will definitely be better for the hero but will take some time to adapt to yeah i definitely agree when i was looking at the patch notes it was like oh that's in my build that's in my build that's in my build <laughs> 
and I'm gonna have to change everything. So I think you're totally right that just we haven't had enough time for players to sit back and say, okay, what am I gonna get instead of what I've been playing for so long? Um, but I do, I do believe and hope that it's not gonna be the end of seeing our beloved Dibbles in these games. Poor, poor Dibbles. It has been cool, though, to see Muradin emerge. I've always really loved him. He has a talent array and ability named Dwarf Toss, which, come on, that's like the greatest name of all time. It's basically Lord of the Rings, which I love. <laughs> so I think that's really cool, and I've really enjoyed seeing him more. Of course, we've also seen him emerge as well because people really like using him as a counter to that Illidan. And... We already were seeing that a little bit before the patch, and then the patch buffed those talents that people were taking for the thunderclap. So, so Blizzard seeing, okay, this is what you're using to adapt to Illidan. We're gonna help you out just a little bit with that. You're on the right track there. So I think that I thought that was a really cool change to see. Yeah, I like the mix of nerfing the the tanks that are. I mean a little bit, nerfing a little bit the tanks that are so prominent and then giving a few buffs to some of the tanks that are not so prominent. I think that's a good strategy for Blizzard and I'm excited to see them keep making it viable to play any hero with multiple different kinds of talents. The more uh, strategic flexibility we have, the more interesting this game is going to be for us esports fans, I think. I think that the word you might have been looking for was strategery. I actually had to think before saying that, <laughs> before, so I didn't say strategery. But yes, you were right. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> well, you know we me go. too well, Gilly. I do know. I do know. I, I, th I heard it too, and I was like, I wonder if she was thinking of strategery. <laughs> but we are loading in to the Dragonshire. It's game one in our finals. We've got the plays and pool plato. A lot of P names. Mm -hmm. When you first said it, I wasn't sure if it was pull Play-Doh. Like, if you have some Play-Doh and I grab it from you, I'm pulling Play-Doh. <laughs> uh, and that would have been a cool name, too. It's it's a very mysterious name. It really is. I, I think that if pull Play-Doh wins here, we should get Frojo to do an interview with them so that we can just know what the heck is going on with their names. But for now, I guess we'll be content to introduce these teams. We've got the plays on... Blue side with Yao Kao on ETC, Evan Drende playing Vala, Pirate Rum once again playing Illidan, Lex Uther this time on Rhaegar, and Zeus playing that Tassadar. And on the opposing team, we have Apollo playing Falstad, Lyricals will play Sylvanas, King Plato will play Jaina, Charm will play Muradin, Radlack will play Brightwing, and that will round out Pool Plato. And instantly, both teams coming to this middle section, as we often see here, just wanting to grab a quick gank if they're able to do so. The play's being a little more passive here. They know that there's stuns that could come out from Muradin that could mean a lot of damage right away from Lyricals and King Plato. So a little bit of respect here as we move into the lanes. I'm wondering if we'll see that mid to bot movement with four heroes again. It looks like for now we might see, be seeing that with the plays as Illidan's going to jump in before being uh, s silenced there and uh, going to have to move away. Yeah, it's like we're watching the last game. Very, very similar start to this. Zeus getting slowed, uh, but will not go down. That's fine. Evan Drunday, Pirate Roman, Lex Uther looking to maybe grab Apollo, push out this bottom lane. Soak experience. They're going back and forth between those lanes while ETC and Muradin hang out here in the top. Tank buddies just bashing heads against each other. Well, here is the party lane in bot. Tassadar choosing to remain in mid. Tassadar is a really great mid lane hero on this map because of his oracle. He's got lots of vision, can always see when a gank is incoming. But I wanted to talk about seasoned marksmen on Falstad. Oh, so hmm. often we see power throw there at level one, but choosing to go seasoned marksmen. So we're going to try, we're going to see Apollo really going for kills both minions and uh, mercs even as well. Yes, and heroes of course, because hero kills win games. Both shrines being picked up right now for Pool Plato. Definitely on Falstad looking to buff that damage. So when, when we were trying to convince them to take more damage, they were really looking to take more damage. I'm excited to see that aggression coming out of them. Zeus now maybe in trouble trying to deny the Dragon Knight, but it looks like we will see a very early grab on the Dragon Knight here. Nope, we won't. It'll get canceled just in time down here by plays. Man, there was a crazy fight going on for Top Shrine up there. I th really thought Yelkow was going to die, but did make it out. Yelkow playing ETC. I just thought of that. Dude, when you said it, I just heard it too. 
It's a rocking uh, bovine, you know? <laughs> exactly. It's a yelling right. cow. Oh, Pirate jumping in there, really wanting to pick up King Play-Doh, and a great body block will ensure that takedown. Now Lyrical's in a lot of trouble. Will be able to Banshee out, though, and saves the day. Everyone here a little bit low, but both teams have picked up their level 4 talents, and once again, the shrines are for Pool Play-Doh. Yeah, Plays has <laughs> one kill. Oh, what's going Go on? Go ahead, you're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> Plays has one kill. No kills yet for PPST, but that doesn't really mean much. We have structures in the same place. We have experience in the same place. No one's pulling ahead here, so the Dragon Knight really does mean something. Lyricals will put on that Dragon Suit, try to get some structures, which should give a an experience advantage to Pool Plato. Avenger getting really low, will be able to get away, but will Lex Uther taking a lot of damage from that lightning rod does stay safe for now. Lyricals, a very early Dragon Knight means they're really just going to be looking to get some turrets down. I don't see them really pushing in too much onto a fort, and they might even rotate out of here, knowing that they can't, they can lose that Dragon Knight really, really easily. The reason why I had almost a heart attack is because Tavstar did pick up Promote. Ah, this is something that I've been seeing in Storm League for a while now. It's so freaking cool. The split push Tassadar is really fun and really awesome to see. But also, um, it's it's just a really cool new talent that got buffed in the last patch too. It's really interesting because I feel like, just like making fetch happen, Blizzard has been trying to make minions happen. Uh, you, you know, with possession from Sylvanas and other other things like that. I really love the idea of those strategies, and I'm excited to see them getting a little more play. Yeah, you know, coming in does push back King Plato, but not quite enough to be able to secure that kill. And now Charm's coming in as well. Yao Kao taking a bunch of damage, going to try to get away from those stuns of Muradin. Both teams picking up their level 7 talents here. Pretty close in terms of experience, but Pool Plato does have an edge that if not watched, they could grab their heroic abilities first. Absolutely. Again, you know, referencing as far as what we're actually looking at stats-wise, pretty even still. There's a tiny advantage left over for uh, PPST in terms of having had the Dragon Knight getting structures. They have a little bit of a level lead, but other than that, things are looking very even. So, uh, as we often see on this map, we're seeing a little bit of a tick-tock and evenness, and I'll be looking for that moment when things start to turn tides for somebody. We do see the Siege Giants going to pull Play-Doh, and the Bruisers will be going down for uh, plays, so we'll be getting some pushing action in these lanes. Rut row, Radlock came in, so the plays knew that Brightwing had bribe, and we're watching for her to come in and try to pick up these giants, but Evan was just a, a smidge too late in denying it, and Brightwing was able to pick up the giants with those bribe stacks, choosing to pick up bribe instead of scouting drone, and uh, it's paying off there. Yeah, interesting. I guess they feel like they've got enough vision and enough coverage of the map that they don't need that. Bribe is going to be really important in terms of pushing lanes. It's interesting to see what teams will focus on there, whether they're going to be looking to get the Dragon Knight, whether they're going to be looking to gank or win team fights. It looks like in this case both teams are looking for much the same thing. They want to keep pressure in lanes, they want to be ready to win team fights, but not necessarily overextend into them. And it looks like they'll be looking for shrines now. The shrines are up for now. Pool Play-Doh has top while the plays has bottom. and. Possibly an engagement here, but the place has to be really careful. Any death at this point could give Pool Plato their heroic abilities, and that would be huge in helping them pick up the rest of those kills and then a Dragon Knight from there. They're Still getting close. Out of control. They do have that level 10 now, so uh, so plays are going to very intelligently pull back. They do not want to engage until they get their own level 10, so they're looking for some minion kills. This does give an excellent window for the Dragon Knight, and Pool Plato will make great use of that. King Plato is going to put on the Dragon Suit. Looks like he was going to head toward top, but changed his mind. He's going to come mid with Charm Lyricals and Apollo, and they're going to try to make work of this fort. Pool Plato did pick up Hinterland Blast, Wailing Arrow. The uh, Water Elemental Avatar and Blink Heal for their heroics, but here comes the stage dive from Yelkow and Lyricals so low already, Ooh. as is Radlack, and both of them are going to dive very quickly. But there's the Hinterland Blast, Pirate getting very low, does get Ancestral Heal back up, and they will pick up the Muradin kill as well. Still trying to keep Lex Uther alive, he's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place with King Plato <laughs> and Apollo, but will get out as they're able to secure 
the kill on King Play-Doh. So four for zero engagement as soon as the plays hit that 10. And although Pool Play-Doh was able to pick up that four, you have to wonder if they stayed in just too long there because they're one, as soon as their opponents hit the level 10, they were ready to go. We were talking about stage dive and how important it is that it hits just the right spot. And in that case, I think it really did. It brought two members of P PPSD, T, PPSD, Pool Play-Doh. It brought two members down very, very low. And that was the catalyst that ultimately turned the momentum in favor of plays in that fight. So they are feeling really good right now. Both teams at level 11, but uh, certainly those kills helped the plays put themselves back in a good spot in spite of the fact that they were up against the Dragon Knight. The heroics that we saw. Oh, Zeus getting stunned a little bit, but is going to be able to dimensional shift away. No problem. The heroics that we saw from the plays in that fight were Strafe, Ancestral Healing, Archon, Stage Dive, and the Metamorphosis. And they have a really good little bit of an experience lead. They want to try to get to that 13 by the next Dragon fight so that they're able to pick up a Dragonite this time. Yeah, we now see that... Uh Pool Play-Doh is going to grab their Siege Giants. They may be looking to make sure that they secure their side of the map so that the next time they engage in a team fight, they don't have too many things to worry about. The Shrines will activate in about 20 seconds, so they're wanting to get everything taken care of now, make sure they're healthy, and get ready for those skirmishes that, that are going to happen. However, it looks like we may have plays being a little more aggressive. We have four members down here looking to take out those Siege Giants. They have Siege Giants behind them as well, and they're going to look to be pushing toward this fort with only Charm to defend it, now joined by Lyrical's King Play-Doh and Radlock. So we'll see if plays are going to engage. It looks like they're maybe going to say, just kidding, ha ha ha, you had to be down there, now we're going to go th get the shrines. Yeah, Tassadar threw an oracle before they went in and saw that everyone else was there to be able to defend. So they're going to get out at this point. Falstad and ETC, look, they're the ones on top. They're the ones who would be able to get down here if an engagement happens, and it's going to happen. Lex Uther and now Pirate jumping in on Lyricals. There's the Ooh. stage dive from ETC. It's a perfect stage dive. Jaina goes down so fast. Evan is now healed up from Lex Uther and ready to hop back into the battle. Charm taking a ton of damage here. Ravak was the one behind, and now Apollo has flown in. Remember, he has to, uh, he might, his range of flight is not infinite. So he had to move down a little bit before he was able to fly in here and was a little bit late in that time. Now we've picked up the Muradin kill as well. And probably the plays are going to try to just get out here because Apollo has that Hinterloom Blast, but he dropped it. Zeus had a great dimensional shift to make sure that he did not get die from it. And now they're just going to stay safe. Very interesting. I think we're seeing a few things happen. One is that this uh, this stage dive placement, as well as the ancestral healing, is really proving to be very important for the plays. Also, really interesting to kind of watch the leapfrogging that's happening. We have Illidan, we have Muradin, we have Falstad, mm -hmm. all of whom can kind of do a lot of leapfrogging around and uh, making themselves scarce in battle. But the fact that there's so much of it is kind of evening it out for the team so they can jump all over each other. As we see Apollo, same thing happening. Pirate Room almost had him has to actually back off as both Lex Uther and he are low. Lex Uther is going to get the Ancestral Heal this time, and now we're looking at a pretty healthy team for the plays. Looks like maybe uh, Pool Play-Doh has to fall back, but they are going to re-engage. They're looking very, very healthy now, and the plays want nothing to do with it. Charb jumping in, going to try and get Zeus. Zeus is going to shield himself, get a little bit of healing, and he is going to be able to get out just fine. No deaths in that engagement. So it looks like maybe Pool Play-Doh is going to try to grab these shrines, but in fact they're both blue at the moment. Although Falstad cannot fly, uh, does not have an infinite flight range, he was able to fly sooner and went up and picked that shrine. That helped them just keep the pressure off of themselves just for a little bit. Both shrines were for the plays, but now ETC has to run back up. Both teams are level 14, very close in terms of experience. We're going to have yet another engagement as the heroics for both teams are about to be up again. They're going for Apollo. They want to grab that false tag, get rid of his gathering power stacks, but Vala has gone down. That's a damage dealer down for the place. We need to get out of here quickly because they're all so low, and oh man, that was a hinterland blast. It almost took out Lex Uther. Pirates getting pretty low because he's constantly being stunned by Charm in that Avatar state and is the next one to drop. Now they're after Yelkow. Lyricals is going to Banshee in very aggressively through down and in Venom, but a stage dive to safety will save the day. And oh my gosh, can he get the. Oh, he got the dragon. No. <laughs> what a play!
Wow, that is a really great play. After what I think looked like a little bit of an overextension in that last team fight, Yalkow now saying, all right, I'll take the Dragon Knight while you're not looking, but he's not doing much with it. He's actually running back to his side of the map, so looking for some teammates to help. He doesn't want to be all alone in that suit when it finally explodes. He stage dove to the shrine, and it was like do or die last eighth of a second barely got at the frost bolt was out of the wand of king plato and was able to secure i honestly didn't think he was going to be able to but now they're going to be able to pick up this fort and that's helping even up that experience lead that pool plato had started to get because of those last kills and now they're even level 16 before their opponents yeah, really smart play there. And the other thing that it does is now denies a Dragon Knight to their opponents for a while, because if they had left that sitting there, they would have had to defend it against Pool Plato as well. Yelkow saying, okay, we're going to take it. Even if we don't do much with it, it's still going to deny it for you. And it turns out they're going to be doing lots with it. That level 16 is there, so as soon as they're healthy and all in one place, they're going to be looking for an engagement. Uh, but actually, Pool Plato does hit 16 as well. So we'll see if the teams want to fight. Looks like they do. They're trying to catch Charm out, but Charm is so tanky. Stage Dive is going to go down, but not hit as well as it has in the past. Charm's still trying to get out. The Hinterland Blast is going to go down, do a little bit of damage. But we do see both teams fighting for good position. Pirate Rum, Metamorphosis is trying to do lots and lots of damage. Still no deaths for either team, but Charm is getting really low again. Is stunned. Will he go down? Nope, he will be able to get behind the wall. So Yell Cow, oh, the Battle Cow was so low, tried to run away, but failed to do so, fell in the middle. That will be the only person to go down in this engagement. What's amazing me is the play's ability to heal and shield through Hinterland Blast, like every engagement. Tassadar's shield and the healing from Lex Uther have made it so that they've been able to withstand that every time. But they did lose Yelkow in that, and that means they also had somebody down. They couldn't really come in and try to engage on the team, picking up these Siege Giants. So is going to have a bit of a push here. They're going to be able to go down now and take these bottom bruisers, or at least try we don't have ETC for a few more seconds, and Stage Dive isn't up for about 10 even when he pops. But look at the level 16 talents, three blood for bloods on the plays. They're really looking at being able to quickly burn somebody down. There's only one on the side of Pool Plato, but they did pick up Critter Critterize, so Polymorph targets will at least be taking more damage, and Northern Exposure will also make heroes vulnerable. So they're both looking to put on more damage here with their level 16 talents. Yeah, it's really cool to see two teams trying to do the same thing and just butting heads. Really interesting. We do see these Siege Giants will be pushing toward the bottom, but Evandrinde, Zeus, and Lexithia are here to deal with it. Illidan's roaming out and about, and ETC is quite far forward in the top lane, but can he use Stage Dive to get away? Not necessary. He's going to be able to Power Slide and Mount get away, um, not putting himself in danger. So ETC has a lot of escapability, which as a tank can be really, really rare. He's going to grab that top shrine now. I really liked the preemptive, like the forethought from the plays of, hey, let's push our lanes. Oh, and they're actually jumping in. Charm and Lyricals are the only ones here to protect. So while the other team might be able to grab the shrine, they're going to lose their tank here. And that is a huge pickup this late in the game. Yep, both teams even in experience now, just at the very beginning of level 18. So feeling pretty good. Four forts to five forts in favor of Pool Plato, so they're feeling good in that way. But Zeus is standing on the Dragon Shrine, looking like he's feeling like he's going to be able to grab a dragon pretty soon. And he is. He's going to start pushing against this middle lane. He's going to probably even up that structure. What do you think, Gilly? Oh yeah, he's looking to take out a fort here for sure. And the dragon will take quite a bit of damage. King Plato, Lyricals, and Apollo are all throwing everything they've got onto that Dragon Knight. But... They're also throwing as much damage as they can onto the sport. Zeus choosing to stay in a bit. The sport is so close, they know they're going to need this experience because it will catapult them closer to level 20, those storm talents, in addition to just evening out the structures where they can. So there is a minion push up on top for Pool Plato. It looks like that will be the next destination for the place. Yeah, very smart of them to focus only on structures there. They did not want to get baited into a team engagement because they wanted to use the Dragon Knight to push, get the structures, and even out their experience. Now that's paid off because they are level 19, just a few steps before their opponent. It looks like their opponents are really wanting to, uh, wanting to start an engagement here. Zeus going to fall out of the Dragon Knight, and will we see plays turn and fight? Nope, they don't want to. They're happy with what they accomplished. They're going to fall back and grab their bruisers. Tassar is such a great hero to pick up that Dragonite because 
you've got that dimensional shift and even prescience and the dimensional warp. So even you've really got two dimensional shifts there to work with. Such a good escape ability to have somebody who's going to take it. And now we're going to have an engagement most likely here at these giants unless Pool Plato decides to disengage. But both teams are neck and neck in experience. We've had two great series where that's been the case. Mm -hmm. Really evenly matched teams make for fun. Oh. Ooh, the Brightwing bribe. So not even giving their opponents a chance to try to deny those giants. Really smart move there. Lex Luthor and Evan Drinde will now be tasked with taking down these giants in the bot lane so they don't do any damage. Looks like they will also, um, Pool Plato will also take the giants on their side of the map. So they're looking to get a lot of push going in these lanes. They have the entire bottom kind of painted red now. This experience gain is insane, the closeness of this. Mm -hmm. Both teams doing such a good job of making sure they're soaking every place they possibly can. There is level 20 for one, and there is level 20 for the other. Nobody is going to be able to take the advantage of having 20 on a non-20 opponent. So there's, look, look, there's the promote. Go, little promoted soldier. <laughs> Do their bidding. <laughs> I love the promote. It's really interesting that the only distinguishing stat between the two is five kills lead on behalf of the plays, which really, in the scheme of things, if it doesn't equate to an experience lead, doesn't matter that much. So, I, what are each, what are either team going to have to do to swing the odds in their favor at this point? Level twenty can be pretty volatile, Gilly. Well, I think the name of the game is using your mobility to your advantage when you're pool Plato. So Falstad can be anywhere he needs to be. He's going to pick this up, but then he can instantly fly to his team if he needs to. But ETC can do the same thing, and that's what's exactly what's going to happen. Both teams have such good mobility. King Plato has to bolt out immediately and will be able to get away, but now Charm is stuck between five members. He's going to have to dwarf toss away as well. And see, it took Falstad a little bit longer to be able to fly down where they could engage now. But Archon has been used, so has Stage Dive, uh, Strafe has not yet, neither has Metamorphosis or Ancestral Healing. So we're about even in terms of heroics that are available as well. It looks like that the plays want to just take off. They've got a push here in mid that they might deal with to just ensure that their lanes are always in their favor. And ETC is going to go top to pick up the shrine, but the bottom shrine has been picked up for Pool Plato. The plays have got to watch out until ETC can grab that shrine. He does manage to grab it in time. He actually uh, power slid in to make sure he got it as soon as possible. Well thought out there. All five members mid here and staying grouped up for Pool Plato. And same goes for the plays. It looks like Pool Plato is looking for an engagement and the plays are not really into it. They're going to fall back and they're going to look for other advantages on the map while Charm does capture the top shrine. So it looks like the plays are going to have to defend here in mid or grab the bottom shrine. Yeah, it seems like the plays is constantly on the back foot in, in terms of just grabbing whatever shrine they can and then trying to watch mid while they do so. And that gave Pool Plato the advantage of being able to push into that last fort for their opponents and pick that up. Experience lead, not too, uh, too important now that we've got all the talents out, but the structures are, of course, the tail in this game as you've got to be able to take down a keep before you can push in toward that core. I honestly think a Dragon Knight at this point, I mean later in this later in the game the Dragon Knight becomes more and more decisive. So a Dragon Knight at this point in the game could be what either team is really looking for. The plays are not engaging when they get invitations, although all of their ultimates are up, they've had some moments where they're in good position. Maybe they're going to choose to do so here, but maybe they're waiting and want to get that Dragon Knight and just use all of the map objectives to make one big fatal push. Yeah, we're seeing both of them do that. They're trying to create distractions that their enemies have to deal with so that they can go and get shrines. And now we see Pool Plater going for this bottom shrine, but the plays are grabbing top. And I'm betting we're going to see ETC stage dive in here now that he's gotten it. There he is. They want to win this engagement and then pick up the Dragonite and win the game. They are moving back a little bit, but Arkham's there. There's Metamorphosis. It's a great Metamorphosis. They're going back toward King Plato, who is going to bolt away. Now Charm taking a bunch of damage, but that Hinterland Blast wrecked Rhaegar. He is gone. No more heals left for the plays. They've got to be so careful at this point now. They're still engaging in. Charm is low. Apollo looks to be the next one on the chopping block. They will be able to pick him up. Watch out. They've got to get away from that Blizzard. They do get Sylvanas as well, but Illidan goes down. It's still three for three. That's the second time that Illidan has engaged underneath a tower and died. So I think that we're seeing a ham Illidan, which I cannot fault. 
Uh, King Plato and Radlock looking to re-engage. Yelkow so low and just kind of runs into them to his death. Charm's now going to jump in and try to grab this bot shrine. We have three members up for Pool Plato and only two for the plays, and that's a dangerous situation for the Dragon Knight. Luckily, the plays have the top shrine captured, so it's going to take their opponents a little while to go grab that. We'll see if they can deny them the Dragon Knight with only two members. And no false set at least to be able to fly all the way up, so they've really got to take time to deal with that. But we still have 40 seconds before ETC is even up, and that's going to be really, really difficult. And here's what I was talking about, grabbing those mercs that allow you to cause a distraction. Because even if the team doesn't go for it, it still makes an issue because then they're just pushing by themselves and taking out structures for you. That's fewer structures that you have to go through in order to... to uh, win the game when you've got finally picked up the Dragon Knight. Zeus being so smart about interrupting this channel here in the mid lane. He knows he can't go grab either of the shrines, but he can delay for a while the inevitable Dragon Knight grab, which is such an important thing at this point in the game. If he had allowed Pool Plato to grab that Dragon Knight, that would have likely been a big problem for them. So Lex Uther coming in to join, but now Charm Lyricals and Apollo coming here to try to contest this mid. But in the meantime, Illidan has grabbed the bot shrine, so the Dragon Knight uh, danger is now over. But I do believe we lost Rhaegar there. I have to say here, but at what cost? Because we <laughs> lost Vala and Rhaegar in that. Vala just dying, trying to stop Falstad, and Rhaegar dying in the middle there as they were trying to deny Wall. Illidan could pick up that bottom shrine. So now they're coming back in. Both shrines have been picked up for the plays, but there's no way they're really going to be able to go for it right now. They're just trying to take out the members of Pool Plato, but it's, it's a 3v5 engagement here. Yeah, not, not an engagement they definitely want to be in. The thing is, I think that they were willing to make a payment to keep their opponents from getting the Dragon Knight because they thought that was going to be ultimate destruction for them. They may have paid a little too much, but grabbing the top and bottom shrines gave them a little bit of insurance time. Now it's only 10 seconds till Rhaegar's back up, and then they have a full team here. So they they have paid dearly, but they're not too far behind than they would have been if the Dragon Knight had gone to pull Plato. Vala is going straight to bot shrine, and Rhaegar is on his way, which means it's only three heroes here at mid. But we're actually seeing Pool Plato not be aggressive there. Instead, trying to create those opportunities where they've made something to distract the players where then they can pick up the Dragonite. It's so hard to pick up the Dragonite when you've got the shrines, you've got nothing pushing in your advantage. So that's exactly what they're trying to do, and that's something that a lot of our players who are newer can definitely pick up on, is that it's a lot easier to pick up the Dragonite when you're forcing the enemy to try to deal with minions pushing. Yeah, Charm actually went and face-checked these bruisers here on the side of plays. Plays are going to be able to pick them up, but also Pool Plato picked up their bruiser, so they're going to have matching pushes going on up here in the top. All five of the plays together now in the mid lane. Looks like two... Uh, Two members of Pool Plato not together, but are going to be joining them in mid. Looks like they may be ready for this engagement. Nope, in fact, Illidan is going to go down and grab the bruisers along with Evan Drinde. And uh, the rest of the team is looking to grab a little, a little action as the rest come through. Pool Plato has to know that this is exactly where the team is. They're not on the map at all. It's the only objective that is available to take, but it's too late. The plays have picked it up, and now it's Siege Giants pushing. Well, it was. They were just taken out with the bruisers. So ETC, what is he going to do? He's going to head straight to the top shrine, but he's probably going to have to stage dive in and will do so as well. Not really catching too many people. Charm is way in the back attacking Evan Drinde, and now he's just going to Dwarf Toss out. Meanwhile, there is the Hinterland Blast. Takes a big chunk of health off of Tassadar, but he can heal back up. It's not too big of a deal for him as he decided to shield other members to keep them safe. Now Yelkow is going in pretty deep, going to disengage immediately as uh, Charm is able to stun Vala and then his team can pick up on that. And now Vala's down for 60 seconds. The plays are going to try to get out. They don't need to lose anybody else at this point. They really need everyone to, there to defend, especially if Pool Plato is going to get a Dragon Knight. Really smart play by Charm in these team fights. Really making a habit of being way far in the back line of the plays until finally plays are like, okay, well, he's way out of position, and they all turn on him, pulling away from the rest of PPST. Uh, and then he just dwarf tosses out and is fine. So really, really smart positioning play there that really, I think, is making a difference in these team fights. 
All right, well, here we go once again. Pool Plato is on the Shrine. Zilladin's jumping in, does stop Charm, but now he is way up in front. They're trying to catch out Apollo and almost did so, and he's getting very low, but so is Pirate Rum. He's going to be healed back up, and now Lex Uther is here in this fight. Vol is only down for 10 more seconds, and I'm surprised we're just seeing them try to fight each other here instead of going up to one of the shrines, but they feel like they can't do so. One person, but one person would have... Uh, made them lose people even more, but they've already lost ETC, and now this is going to be even more difficult for them to to stop. Hinterland Blast does take out Rhaegar, and it looks like just no matter what is happening, the plays seem to be suffering. Zeus using both, <laughs> using invulner his, becoming invulnerable, but still he's so far out of the way that there's not much he can do to get away. He's just distracting. Ooh, perhaps I was wrong. No, turns around, asks for a little bit more and will likely go down. Lyricals and Apollo in hot pursuit. Evan Drinde also very low, needs to get behind the wall in order to protect the only remaining member of their team. But now there is a late game Dragon Knight coming in from Pool Plato and only a poor little Vala there to do anything about it. So I think this will mean problems for the plays. Yeah, Evan even getting booted out. <laughs> Charm saying, no thank you, you're the only one here. We're going to take out down this keep very quickly, already posturing for core. It's going to be 40 seconds before Tasker is up, 30 until Illidan's up. We've got Evan here with Yelkow spawning, but that will be it. He's going to stage dive in. It will not be enough. And the first game of this series will go to Pool Plato. Wow, very well played, even match with lots of tiny intricacies that really made this. I think that my favorite little MVP moment, like I said, was noticing how Charm was using the psychology of, of this game to Pool Plato's advantage by being quote unquote overextended mm -hmm. and then drawing the attention away from where it would have been best expended for the plays in the team fight situations. They kept falling back on him where he's a tank, he can take lots of damage and he can also hop out of the way. So the leapfrog advantage really went to pull Plato in that game. That is the case. Unfortunately, my split push Tassadar was not able to win that for the plays, but that's okay. You're still number one in my heart. <laughs> Promoted Tassadar. <laughs> you know, and I don't think they were incapable either. I think that just in those last few team fights, they were out of position. They had the wrong focus. A few things just didn't hit the way they wanted to, but really fun, really even match. And I'm excited to see what changes we'll see as we go into game two. I am as well. And with that, we will take a short break while our teams pick the next map for you guys. And we will be back soon with game two.